who was the first physician in history. The first physician known by name was Imhotep, an Egyptian who lived about 2600 B. C. Also considered a sage, Imhotep lived at a time when the Egyptians were making progress in medicine. The advances included a textbook on the treatment of wounds, broken bones, and even tumors. Imhotep was later worshipped as a god by the Egyptians. Who was the first physician in history? The first physician known by name was Imhotep, an Egyptian who lived about 2600 B. C. Also considered a sage, Imhotep lived at a time when the Egyptians were making progress in medicine. The advances included a textbook on the treatment of wounds, broken bones, and even tumors. Imhotep was later worshipped as a god by the Egyptians. What is the Hippocratic Oath? The Hippocratic Oath is the pledge taken by many medical students upon graduation or upon entering into practice. While the text of the oath varies by translation, one important line reads, I will prescribe regimen for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment and never to harm anyone. The vows are attributed to the Greek physician and teacher Hippocrates. C 460 C 377 BC, who practiced on the island of Kos. Unlike his predecessors, who relied on superstitious practices in their treatment of patients. Hippocrates believed that diseases were brought on not by supernatural causes but by natural ones. He further believed that disease could be studied and cured, this assertion forms the basis of modern medicine. Which is why Hippocrates is called the father of medicine. It is largely owing to another prominent Greek physician that the oath was handed down through history. Galen, AD 129 C 199, was physician to Roman emperors Marcus Aurelius. 121 to 80, from 161 and Lucius Commodus, 161 to 92, from 168. He demonstrated that arteries carry blood, not air. As had been thought, and, like Hippocrates, Galen believed in the four humors of the body. He left medical texts that for centuries were considered the authoritative works on medical practice. Galen's writings reveal his high regard for Hippocrates, who lived and worked many centuries earlier. What is the Hippocratic Oath? The Hippocratic Oath is the pledge taken by many medical students upon graduation or upon entering into practice. While the text of the oath varies by translation, one important line reads, I will prescribe regimen for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment and never to harm anyone. 
The vows are attributed to the Greek physician and teacher Hippocrates. C 460 C 377 BC, who practiced on the island of Kos. Unlike his predecessors, who relied on superstitious practices in their treatment of patients. Hippocrates believed that diseases were brought on not by supernatural causes but by natural ones. He further believed that disease could be studied and cured, this assertion forms the basis of modern medicine. Which is why Hippocrates is called the father of medicine. It is largely owing to another prominent Greek physician that the oath was handed down through history. Galen, AD 129 C 199, was physician to Roman emperors Marcus Aurelius. 121 to 80, from 161 and Lucius Commodus, 161 to 92, from 168. He demonstrated that arteries carry blood, not air. As had been thought, and, like Hippocrates, Galen believed in the four humors of the body. He left medical texts that for centuries were considered the authoritative works on medical practice. Galen's writings reveal his high regard for Hippocrates, who lived and worked many centuries earlier. What are the four humors? The four humors are the bodily fluids, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, originating in the heart, brain, liver, and spleen, respectively. One work assigned to Greek physician Hippocrates, C 460 C 377 BC, Nature of Man, asserts that illness is caused by an imbalance of the four humors, fluids, in the body. The presence of these humors was thought to determine the health and personality of a person. This belief prevailed for centuries but was finally discredited by modern science. During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, each of the humors was assigned certain characteristics. Someone of ruddy complexion was believed to have an excessive amount of blood in his or her system. That person would be sanguine, cheerful and optimistic in character. The word sanguine is derived from the Latin word sanguis, meaning blood. Someone who had an imbalance resulting in more phlegm was considered phlegmatic, and would have a slow and impassive temperament. An individual who had excessive yellow bile was considered hot-tempered and a person who had more black bile in his or her physiological system was believed to be melancholic. What are the four humors? The four humors are the bodily fluids, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, originating in the heart, brain, liver, and spleen, respectively. One work assigned to Greek physician Hippocrates, C 460 C 377 BC, Nature of Man, asserts that illness is caused by an imbalance of the four humors, fluids, in the body. The presence of these humors was thought to determine the health and personality of a person. 
This belief prevailed for centuries but was finally discredited by modern science. During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, each of the humors was assigned certain characteristics. Someone of ruddy complexion was believed to have an excessive amount of blood in his or her system. That person would be sanguine, cheerful and optimistic, in character. The word sanguine is derived from the Latin word sanguis, meaning blood. Someone who had an imbalance resulting in more phlegm was considered phlegmatic and would have a slow and impassive temperament. An individual who had excessive yellow bile was considered hot-tempered. And a person who had more black bile in his or her physiological system was believed to be melancholic. How old is biological warfare? Biological or germ warfare has a long history. For example, in the year 1343, Tatars. Originally a nomadic tribe of East Central Asia, became sick with the bubonic plague. The disease, which is carried by fleas and rats was called the Black Death because nearly all who became afflicted died. Invading the Crimea, in present-day Ukraine, the marauding Tatars encountered a group of Genos. Italian, merchants at a trading post. Besieging them, the Tatars catapulted their dead at their enemy. Many of whom became infected, carrying the plague to Constantinople. Present-day Istanbul, Turkey, and to the Western European ports where they traveled. In the 20th century, the use of microorganisms or toxins that produce sickness in people or in animals. Or that cause destruction to crops, was outlawed by the Geneva Gas Protocol of 1925 In 1972 the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention was simultaneously opened for signature in Moscow, Washington, and London, and the agreement entered into force on March 26, 1975. Signed by more than 162 nations. The convention bans the development, production, stockpiling acquisition, and retention of microbial or other biological agents or toxins in types and in quantities that have no justification for prophylactic, protective, or other peaceful purposes. Nevertheless, several nations have conducted further research into defense against biological warfare including developing microorganisms suitable for military retaliation. The existence of such biological weapons including anthrax and smallpox remains a concern today. The possibility that Iraq possessed biological and chemical weapons of mass. Destruction was the primary reason for the U.S.-led invasion of that country in 2003. How old is biological warfare? Biological or germ warfare has a long history. For example, in the year 1343, Tatars. Originally a nomadic tribe of East Central Asia, became sick with the bubonic plague. 
the disease, which is carried by fleas and rats, was called the Black Death because nearly all who became afflicted died. Invading the Crimea, in present-day Ukraine, the marauding Tatars encountered a group of Genos. Italian, merchants at a trading post. Besieging them, the Tatars catapulted their dead at their enemy. Many of whom became infected, carrying the plague to Constantinople. Present-day Istanbul, Turkey, and to the Western European ports where they traveled. In the 20th century, the use of microorganisms or toxins that produce sickness in people or in animals. Or that cause destruction to crops, was outlawed by the Geneva Gas Protocol of 1925 In 1972 the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention was simultaneously opened for signature in Moscow, Washington, and London, and the agreement entered into force on March 26, 1975. Signed by more than 162 nations. The convention bans the development, production, stockpiling. Acquisition, and retention of microbial or other biological agents or toxins. In types and in quantities that have no justification for prophylactic, protective, or other peaceful purposes. Nevertheless, several nations have conducted further research into defense against biological warfare. Including developing microorganisms suitable for military retaliation. The existence of such biological weapons, including anthrax and smallpox, remains a concern today. The possibility that Iraq possessed biological and chemical weapons of mass destruction was the primary reason for the U.S. led invasion of that country in 2003. Is anthrax a new disease? No, the disease dates back thousands of years, at least to biblical times. But its potential use as a bioterrorism weapon is relatively recent. Anthrax is caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacterium, spores that can survive in soil for years. It is mainly a disease of grass-eating livestock. But humans who work with herd animals may become infected through exposure. In humans, anthrax occurs as a cutaneous, skin, form, as a pulmonary, inhaled. Form or as an intestinal infection after the consumption of contaminated meat. The fifth and sixth plagues on Egypt, as described in Exodus chapters 9, the pestilence. And 10, the boils, are consistent with anthrax in livestock and humans. In the late 1800s scientists made several important discoveries regarding anthrax. The anthrax germ, Bacillus anthracis, was the first germ linked to a particular disease. In 1881 French scientist Louis Pasteur developed an inoculation to protect animals from the disease. Anthrax emerged as a potential weapon of bioterrorism during the 20th century. Several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, Iraq, and the former Soviet Union experimented with the bacterium. Beginning in the 1990s, U.S. troops headed for combat in the Persian Gulf were vaccinated for anthrax. Is 
Is anthrax a new disease? No, the disease dates back thousands of years, at least to biblical times. But its potential use as a bioterrorism weapon is relatively recent. Anthrax is caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacterium, spores that can survive in soil for years. It is mainly a disease of grass-eating livestock. But humans who work with herd animals may become infected through exposure. In humans, anthrax occurs as a cutaneous, skin, form, as a pulmonary, inhaled form, or as an intestinal infection after the consumption of contaminated meat. The fifth and sixth plagues on Egypt, as described in Exodus chapters 9, the pestilence and 10, the boils, are consistent with anthrax in livestock and humans. In the late 1800s scientists made several important discoveries regarding anthrax. The anthrax germ, Bacillus anthracis, was the first germ linked to a particular disease. In 1881 French scientist Louis Pasteur developed an inoculation to protect animals from the disease. Anthrax emerged as a potential weapon of bioterrorism during the 20th century. Several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, Iraq, and the former Soviet Union experimented with the bacterium. Beginning in the 1990s, U.S. troops headed for combat in the Persian Gulf were vaccinated for anthrax. What advances were made in medicine during the Middle Ages? During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, medicine became institutionalized. The first public hospitals were opened and the first formal medical schools were established, making healthcare formerly administered only in the home, more widely available and improving the training of doctors. These developments had been brought on by necessity. Europe saw successive waves of epidemics during the Middle Ages. Outbreaks of leprosy began in the 500s and peaked in the 1200s, the Black Death. The Bubonic Plague killed about a quarter of the European population. And smallpox and other diseases afflicted hundreds of thousands of people. Consequently, many hospitals meant to serve the poor were established. As were the first medical schools, some of them associated with universities that were then forming such as the University of Bologna, Italy, and the University of Paris, France. In 900 the first medical school was started in Salerno, Italy. European physicians during the period were greatly influenced by the works of Persian physician and philosopher Rezes. Or Reza, C865 C930 considered the greatest doctor of the Islamic world. Rezes' works accurately describing measles and smallpox were translated into Latin and became seminal references in the Christian world as well. Another prominent Islamic, the scientist Avicenna, or Ibn Sina, 980-1037,
produced a philosophical scientific encyclopedia, which included the medical knowledge of the time. In the West, the work became known as Canon of Medicine and with its descriptions of many diseases, including tetanus and meningitis, it remained influential in European medical education for the next 600 years. What advances were made in medicine during the Middle Ages? During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, medicine became institutionalized. The first public hospitals were opened and the first formal medical schools were established, making healthcare formerly administered only in the home, more widely available and improving the training of doctors. These developments had been brought on by necessity. Europe saw successive waves of epidemics during the Middle Ages. Outbreaks of leprosy began in the 500s and peaked in the 1200s, the Black Death. The bubonic plague, killed about a quarter of the European population. And smallpox and other diseases afflicted hundreds of thousands of people. Consequently, Many hospitals meant to serve the poor were established. As were the first medical schools, some of them associated with universities that were then forming. Such as the University of Bologna, Italy, and the University of Paris, France. In 900 the first medical school was started in Salerno, Italy. European physicians during the period were greatly influenced by the works of Persian physician and philosopher Rezes. Or Reza, C865 C930. Considered the greatest doctor of the Islamic world. Rezes's works accurately describing measles and smallpox were translated into Latin and became seminal references in the Christian world as well. Another prominent Islamic, the scientist Avicenna, or Ibn Sina, 980-1037, produced a philosophical scientific encyclopedia, which included the medical knowledge of the time. In the West, the work became known as Canon of Medicine and with its descriptions of many diseases, including tetanus and meningitis, it remained influential in European medical education for the next 600 years. Were there hospitals before the Middle Ages? Public hospitals emerged during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. As Christianity spread and religious orders set up the facilities to serve the poor. Still, most people received a doctor's care in the privacy of their own homes. The concept of a public health care facility originated in India as early as the 3rd century BC when Buddhists established hospital-like installations. The Middle Ages saw the establishment of facilities more closely resembling modern hospital including Paris's Hotel Dieu. Founded in the 7th century, today it is the oldest hospital still in operation. In 970 a hospital in Baghdad, in present-day Iraq. Divided physicians into the equivalent of modern-day interns and externs. 
its pharmacy disseminated drugs, as well as spices deemed to have medicinal value. From all over the known world. Were there hospitals before the Middle Ages? Public hospitals emerged during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. As Christianity spread and religious orders set up the facilities to serve the poor. Still, most people received a doctor's care in the privacy of their own homes. The concept of a public health care facility originated in India as early as the 3rd century BC when Buddhists established hospital-like installations. The Middle Ages saw the establishment of facilities more closely resembling modern hospital including Paris's Hotel Dieu. Founded in the 7th century, today it is the oldest hospital still in operation. In 970 a hospital in Baghdad, in present-day Iraq. Divided physicians into the equivalent of modern day interns and externs. Its pharmacy disseminated drugs, as well as spices deemed to have medicinal value. From all over the known world. When was the first hospital established in North America? It was in 1503 when the Spanish built a hospital in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Then known as Hispaniola. It is no longer in existence, but ruins remain. On the North American mainland, the first hospital was opened in Quebec, Canada. In 1639, the first incorporated hospital in the United States was the Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia. Chartered in 1751 with the support of statesman Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790. When was the first hospital established in North America? It was in 1503 when the Spanish built a hospital in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Then known as Hispaniola. It is no longer in existence, but ruins remain. On the North American mainland, the first hospital was opened in Quebec, Canada. In 1639. The first incorporated hospital in the United States was the Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia. Chartered in 1751 with the support of statesman Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790. What advances were made in medicine during the Renaissance? The chief advance of the Renaissance, 1350-1600, was an improved understanding of the human anatomy. This knowledge was the direct result of dissection, which was prohibited during the Middle Ages, 500-1350 The scientific spirit of the Renaissance saw those laws relaxed. 
and researchers were free to dissect human corpses for study. Among those who practiced dissection was Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519. While the Italian artist may be better known for the Mona Lisa. He also contributed greatly to the understanding of human anatomy. Producing more than 750 anatomical drawings as a result of his studies in dissection. What advances were made in medicine during the Renaissance? The chief advance of the Renaissance, 1350 to 1600, was an improved understanding of the human anatomy. This knowledge was the direct result of dissection, which was prohibited during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. The scientific spirit of the Renaissance saw those laws relaxed. And researchers were free to dissect human corpses for study. Among those who practiced dissection was Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519. While the Italian artist may be better known for the Mona Lisa. He also contributed greatly to the understanding of human anatomy. Producing more than 750 anatomical drawings as a result of his studies in dissection. What was the first scientific textbook on human anatomy? It is a work titled On the Structure of the Human Body, written by Belgian physician and professor Andreas V. E. S. Aleus. 1514-1564 and published in 1543, when he was in his late twenties. Like other anatomists during the Renaissance, 1350-1600, V.E.S. Aleus conducted numerous dissections of human cadavers. Publishing his findings and drawings, his textbook soon became the authoritative reference. Overturning the works of Greek physician Galen, 129 C 199 What was the first scientific textbook on human anatomy? It is a work titled On the Structure of the Human Body written by Belgian physician and professor Andreas V. E. S. Aleus. 1514-1564, and published in 1543, when he was in his late twenties. Like other anatomists during the Renaissance, 1350-1600, V. E. S. Aleus conducted numerous dissections of human cadavers. Publishing his findings and drawings, his textbook soon became the authoritative reference. Overturning the works of Greek physician Galen, 129 C 199. What is Gray's Anatomy? It is the popular name for anatomy of the human body, descriptive and surgical. Written by English physician Henry Gray, 1825 or 1827 to 1861. First published in 1858, 
the tome is still considered the standard work on anatomy. And it is in print today in several editions, including the concise Gray's Anatomy. Gray was a lecturer in anatomy at London's St. George's Hospital and was a fellow of Britain's Royal College of Surgeons. He was 33 years old when he compiled the book, which went on to be used by medical students for more than a century. What is Gray's Anatomy? It is the popular name for anatomy of the human body, descriptive and surgical. Written by English physician Henry Gray, 1825 or 1827 to 1861. First published in 1858, the tome is still considered the standard work on anatomy. And it is in print today in several editions, including the concise Gray's Anatomy. Gray was a lecturer in anatomy at London's St. George's Hospital and was a fellow of Britain's Royal College of Surgeons. He was 33 years old when he compiled the book, which went on to be used by medical students for more than a century. When did modern medicine begin? The practices of modern medicine have their roots in the 1600s. It was early in the century when the work of English physician William Harvey, 1578-1657, demonstrated to the science community that effective medicine depends on knowledge of the body's structure. From 1597 to 1602 Harvey studied medicine at Padua, Italy, under Italian surgeon Fabricius, or Fabrici, 1537-1619, and went on to perform numerous experiments to learn how blood circulates through the body. In his studies, Harvey discarded the accepted method of studying parts of a problem and then filling in the gaps with theory, Instead he aimed to understand the entire circulatory system. Studying the pulse and heartbeat, and performing dissections on cadavers. He accurately concluded that the heart pumps blood through the arteries to all parts of the body and that the blood returns through the veins to the heart. Putting his discovery into writing, Harvey published an anatomical study of the motion of the heart and of the blood in animals in 1628. Another medical development during the 1600s came not at the hands of a physician or surgeon, but rather a naturalist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723. A surveyor to the court of Holland, Van Leeuwenhoek began making his own microscopes and used them to study organisms invisible to the naked eye he had discovered. Microorganisms Leeuwenhoek also observed, but did not name, bacteria. And he accurately described red blood corpus cles, striated muscle fibers, and the lens of the eye. This amateur scientist also disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. The belief that living organisms could be generated by lifeless matter.
When did modern medicine begin? The practices of modern medicine have their roots in the 1600s. It was early in the century when the work of English physician William Harvey, 1578-1657, demonstrated to the science community that effective medicine depends on knowledge of the body's structure. From 1597 to 1602 Harvey studied medicine at Padua, Italy, under Italian surgeon Fabricius, or Fabrici, 1537-1619. And went on to perform numerous experiments to learn how blood circulates through the body. In his studies, Harvey discarded the accepted method of studying parts of a problem and then filling in the gaps with theory, instead, he aimed to understand the entire circulatory system. Studying the pulse and heartbeat, and performing dissections on cadavers. He accurately concluded that the heart pumps blood through the arteries to all parts of the body and that the blood returns through the veins to the heart. Putting his discovery into writing, Harvey published an anatomical study of the motion of the heart and of the blood in animals in 1628. Another medical development during the 1600s came not at the hands of a physician or surgeon, but rather a naturalist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723. A surveyor to the court of Holland, van Leeuwenhoek began making his own microscopes and used them to study organisms invisible to the naked eye he had discovered. Microorganisms. Leeuwenhoek also observed, but did not name, bacteria. And he accurately described red blood corpus cles, striated muscle fibers, and the lens of the eye. This amateur scientist also disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. The belief that living organisms could be generated by lifeless matter. How old is feminism? Feminists people who believe that women should have economic, political, and social equality with men have existed throughout history. Such women are often described in literature and by history as being women before their time. But as a movement, feminism, which is synonymous with the women's rights movement, did not get underway until the mid 1800s. When women in the United States and Great Britain began organizing and campaigning to win the vote, early feminists, and feminists today, were likely influenced by the revolutionary work. Titled A Vindication of the Rights of Woman, published in 1792 by British author and educator Mary Wollstonecraft. 1759-1797, her daughter was writer Mary Shelley of Frankenstein fame. Wollstonecraft attacked the convention of the day, charging that it kept middle class and upper class women in a state of ignorance training them to be useless. A staunch promoter of education, she was self-educated. Wollstonecraft is credited with being the first major philosophical feminist. Were there any other airship disasters before Hindenburg?
yes, as Hugo Eckener, 1868-1954, and his Zeppelin company laid plans in 1934 to build the large and luxurious Hindenburg. Most other nations with airship programs had either abandoned them or were about to. Since all had experienced disastrous and fatal crashes. One of these was when a British dirigible R-101 burned on October 5, 1930. Northwest of Paris while on her maiden voyage to Australia. That disaster claimed 54 lives. Who was Alice Paul? Alice Paul, 1885-1977, was a groundbreaking feminist before the word feminist came into fashion. The Mount Laurel, New Jersey, institute named in her honor describes her as the architect of some of the most outstanding political achievements on behalf of women in the 20th century. Paul was born in 1885 to Quaker parents who instilled in her a belief in gender equality. After completing high school the top in her class. Paul graduated from Swarthmore College in 1905 and began work toward an advanced degree. In 1906 she traveled to England, where she continued her studies did social work, and became actively involved in the suffrage movement. She was arrested three times for her involvement in protests. In 1916, when the American women's suffrage movement was divided and dead in the water, Paul founded the National Woman's Party, NWP, an organization that spearheaded the campaign for national women's suffrage and that continued working for women's rights and equality into the 21st century. Paul's leadership of the suffrage movement was critical in the passage of the 19th Amendment. 1920, which guaranteed women the right to vote. She organized thousands of activists to put enormous pressure on the White House and Congress. Paul employed what was then considered a most unladylike strategy of sustained dramatic, nonviolent protest. The suffrage campaign was characterized by national speaking tours, marches, and pickets, including the first ever at the White House. When protesters were arrested, they sometimes endured brutal prison conditions and staged hunger strikes. After passage of the 19th Amendment, Paul continued her studies. Adding to her master's degree in social work, 1907, a doctorate in economics, 1912. She earned three more advanced degrees culminating in a Doctor of Law degree in 1927 from American University. Called a brilliant political strategist, the forward-thinking Paul authored the first Equal Rights Amendment for Women, which she introduced to Congress in 1923. In 1942 she became chairperson of the National Woman's Party. She later added language of gender equality to the Charter for the United Nations as well as the 1964 Civil Rights Act. After a life of courageous activism on behalf of women, Paul died in 1977. What is Title IX?
considered one of the biggest successes of the modern women's movement. Title IX is part of the Education Amendments of 1972, federal legislation that prohibits any school or college that receives federal funds from discriminating on the basis of sex. The law applies to all aspects of education, including admission, athletics, and curriculum. Why was the Titanic thought to be unsinkable? The RMS Titanic was state-of-the-art, a huge and luxurious ocean liner equipped with the latest and best. The ship's size afforded it great stability, its structure included more steel than had been used in previous ships. It was built with a double bottom both skins were heavier and thicker than those of other ships. The hull was divided by 15 bulkheads, upright partitions. That rose five decks forward and aft, back, and four decks midship. These transverse bulkheads divided the ship into 16 compartments watertight. Chambers any two of which could take on water without sinking the ship. This marvel of modern technology, which was to be the jewel in the crown of the White Star Line, was given a fitting name, Titanic is a Greek word meaning having great force or power. And it was described as practically unsinkable. However, the ship designer did not and could not prepare the ship for what happened on the night of April 14, 1912. Just before midnight, the Titanic was speeding at 21 knots through the North Atlantic. Even though the crew had been warned by other ships that the unusually calm waters were full of ice. When the Titanic's two watchmen, who were not using binoculars, sighted an iceberg in the ship's path, it was only a quarter mile away. The ship was turned to the port, left, but it was too late. The underwater shelf of the ice tore through the plating on the starboard, right, side of the ship. Thin slits developed at the seams in the ship's hull, allowing seawater to enter. The effect was similar to filling an ice tray with water, once one watertight chamber had filled. The rushing water spilled over the top and into the next. Titanic came to symbolize human arrogance. The ship owners and operators believed the Titanic was impervious to nature. Consequently, the ocean liner had not been equipped with the number of lifeboats needed to rescue everyone on board. Titanic's lifeboats had room for about half the passengers. Since there had been no safety drills on board, many lifeboats were launched only half full. The enormous loss of life, which included society's most prominent individuals as well as ordinary families who were immigrating to America, stands out as one of the great tragedies in the history of transportation. How old is biological warfare? Biological or germ warfare has a long history. For example, in the year 1343, Totters. Originally a nomadic tribe of East Central Asia, became sick with the bubonic plague. The disease, 
which is carried by fleas and rats. Was called the Black Death because nearly all who became afflicted died. Invading the Crimea, in present day Ukraine, the marauding Tatars encountered a group of Genos. Italian, merchants at a trading post. Besieging them, the Tatars catapulted their dead at their enemy. Many of whom became infected, carrying the plague to Constantinople. Present day Istanbul, Turkey, and to the Western European ports where they traveled. In the 20th century, the use of microorganisms or toxins that produce sickness in people or in animals. Or that cause destruction to crops, was outlawed by the Geneva Gas Protocol of 1925 In 1972 the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention was simultaneously opened for signature in Moscow, Washington, and London, and the agreement entered into force on March 26, 1975. Signed by more than 162 nations. The convention bans the development, production, stockpiling acquisition, and retention of microbial or other biological agents or toxins in types and in quantities that have no justification for prophylactic, protective, or other peaceful purposes. Nevertheless, several nations have conducted further research into defense against biological warfare including developing microorganisms suitable for military retaliation. The existence of such biological weapons including anthrax and smallpox remains a concern today. The possibility that Iraq possessed biological and chemical weapons of mass. Destruction was the primary reason for the U.S.-led invasion of that country in 2003. Was the Chicago fire really started by a cow? According to legend, the Great Chicago Fire, which burned from October 8 to 9, 1871, was started by a cow. Usually described as belonging to a MRS. O'Leary, kicking over a kerosene lantern onto Coven Street. But the exact cause is unknown, and many theories exist about how it started from one of the O'Leary's cows, who all perished in the blaze. To speculation that a meteor broke apart, raining fiery particles in the region. The Chicago Historical Society catalogued the damage, the so-called burnt district in Compaston. Area four miles long and an average of three quarters of a mile wide more than 2,000 acres including more than 28 miles of streets. 120 miles of sidewalks, and more than 2,000 lampposts. Along with countless trees, shrubs, and flowering plants in the Garden City of the West. Gone were 18,000 buildings. And some $200 million dollars in property, about a third of the valuation of the entire city. Around half of this was insured. But the failure of numerous companies cut the actual payments in half again. 100,000 Chicagoans lost their homes, an uncounted number their places of work. Chicago resident Julia Newberry described the aftermath in her diary in an entry dated October 17, 
published in 1933 by W. W. Norton The fire began at 12 th Sick, Street on Sunday night October. It swept the two magnificent avenues, and every building on the south side from 12 th Street to the river. The courthouse, with the original copy of Father's Will and no one knows how many invaluable papers. Legal documents, records, the beautiful Crosby Opera House, a perfect bijou, sick, of a theater, all the banks. Insurance offices, railway depots, churches, and block after block of stores, unequaled anywhere. And then oh misery, the fire, the red, angry, unrelenting fire. Leapt across the Chicago River, and burnt and burnt, till Mr. Malin Ogden's house was the only one left standing up to Lincoln Park. Yes the whole north side is in ashes. Though the United States has suffered other disastrous fires. Including an 1835 blaze in New York City, which destroyed some 500 buildings. The Chicago Fire is the worst fire tragedy in the recorded history of North America. The damage was not limited to the city of Chicago. Sparks lit forest fires that destroyed more than a million acres of Michigan and Wisconsin timberland. Burning from October 8th to October 14th. These fires were responsible for the loss of more than 1,000 lives in the logging town of Peshtigo, Wisconsin, and in 16 surrounding communities. Like the Great Fire of London 200 years earlier, a flurry of construction activity followed in the city. Making Chicago one of the United States' most architecturally impressive urban centers. In fact, the fire was the impetus for the development of the Chicago School of Architecture. Also called the commercial style, since most of it was devoted to office buildings, warehouses, and department stores. The Chicago School was instrumental in establishing the modern movement of architecture in the United States. But after nearly two decades of accepting the status quo, Friedan asked the question. If women could successfully hold jobs, why shouldn't they? Assessing their happiness, many women opted to pursue work outside the home. The modern women's movement had begun. Soon women were organizing to promote social and political reforms to do away with discrimination in the workplace and eliminate barriers to entry in education and politics. Ferdinand herself helped found the National Organization for Women, now, in 1966. The association grew rapidly and continues to fight for women's equality in the 21st century. What happened to the Tacomaneros Bridge? In 1940, the new 2,800-foot suspension bridge carrying traffic across Washington's Puget Sound was hit by high winds, causing it to buckle and undulate. In the simplest of terms, an engineering error allowed one of the suspensions to give way in the wind. And the bridge became ribbon-like, moving in waves. 
it was ten years before a second span was opened over the body of water. The 1940 accident prompted engineers and bridge designers to be more cautious in the design of suspension bridges. The first wire suspension bridge in the U.S. was built in 1842, the 358-foot long and 25-foot wide bridge spanned the Schuylkill River, near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was supported by five wire cables on either side, and was built by U.S. civil engineer Charles Ellett, Jr. 1810 to 1862, the first chain suspension bridge in the U.S. was built in 1800. What are the facts about the Titanic? As the brainchild of Lord William James Perry and J. Bruce Ismay, Titanic was a marriage of British technology and American money. Perry was head of Harland and Wolfe, a firm known for building the sturdiest and best ships in the British Isles. Ismay was chairman of the White Star Line, owned by American financier J. Pierpont Morgans, 1837-1913, International Mercantile Marine. In 1907 Perry and Ismay came up with a plan to compete with the top-notch Cunard liners by surpassing them both in size and luxury. The ship they planned, Titanic, was built in Belfast along with her sister ship. Olympic, which Titanic exceeded in gross tonnage but not in length. Titanic was 882 feet long, 92 feet wide, and weighed 46,328 gross tons. Nine steel decks rose as high as an 11-story building. Registered as a British ship and manned by British officers. Titanic was launched on May 31, 1911. The ship was everything Paris and Ismay had planned. Titanic's size not only allowed more room to accommodate the increasing number of steerage. Cheapest fare, passengers who were immigrating to the United States. But also featured lavish elegance for first and second class travelers. Creature comforts included the first shipboard swimming pool, Turkish bath, gymnasium, and squash court. First-class cabins were nothing short of opulent. Including coal-burning fireplaces in the sitting rooms and full-size, four-poster beds in the bedrooms. Additionally, there was a loading crane and a compartment for automobiles. The ship's hospital even featured a modern operating room. With her steerage full and some of society's most prominent individuals on board. The RMS Titanic left the docks at Southampton, England, on April 10, 1912. New York Harbor was her final destination. On April 14, the ship was traveling in the exceptionally calm and icy waters of the North Atlantic. Near Newfoundland. At 11.40 p.m., Titanic scraped an iceberg, sustaining damage along the starboard, right, side, from the bow to about midship. The Titanic, which immediately began taking on water, sank in 2 hours and 40 minutes in the early morning hours of April 15. Only 711 of the 2,224 aboard survived. 
The 1,513 lost included American industrialists and businessmen John Jacob Astor IV. Isidore Strauss, of R. H. Macy's, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Harry Elkins Widener. Survivors mostly women and children who had been traveling as first-class passengers were picked up by the Carpathia, which was 58 miles away when it received Titanic's distress signals. It took three and a half hours for Carpathia to reach the site of the disaster by which time the Titanic was gone. Is anthrax a new disease? No, the disease dates back thousands of years, at least to biblical times but its potential use as a bioterrorism weapon is relatively recent. Anthrax is caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacterium, spores that can survive in soil for years. It is mainly a disease of grass-eating livestock. But humans who work with herd animals may become infected through exposure. In humans, Anthrax occurs as a cutaneous, skin, form, as a pulmonary, inhaled form, or as an intestinal infection after the consumption of contaminated meat. The fifth and sixth plagues on Egypt, as described in Exodus chapters 9, the pestilence and 10, the boils, are consistent with anthrax in livestock and humans. In the late 1800s scientists made several important discoveries regarding anthrax. The anthrax germ, Bacillus anthracis, was the first germ linked to a particular disease. In 1881 French scientist Louis Pasteur developed an inoculation to protect animals from the disease. Anthrax emerged as a potential weapon of bioterrorism during the 20th century. Several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, Iraq, and the former Soviet Union experimented with the bacterium. Beginning in the 1990s, U.S. troops headed for combat in the Persian Gulf were vaccinated for anthrax. Who was Emmeline Pankhurst? Pankhurst, 1858-1928, a key figure in the women's suffrage movement. Was a militant reformer who waged a decades-long battle to win the vote for women in Great Britain. Pankhurst's sometimes radical campaign greatly influenced her American counterparts. Though she held various municipal offices and was married to an influential barrister. Richard Marsden Pankhurst she worked for change primarily through the organizations she founded. In 1889 she organized the Women's Franchise League. And five years later the group's work secured the right of all women, married and unmarried, to vote in local elections. She went on to found the Women's Social and Political Union in 1903. The Union was known for its extreme tactics. The British suffragist movement culminated in 1928 with the passage of the Representation of the People Act, which gave all women the right to vote in elections. Pankhurst died later that year.
What happened on Apollo 13? On April 13, 1970, a damaged coil caused an explosion in one of the oxygen tanks on the moon-bound U.S. spacecraft, leaving astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes in a disastrous situation. The explosion damaged the fuel cells as well the craft's heat shield, which was needed to protect the vessel upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. While the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, had experienced a previous disaster in 1967, when three astronauts died in a fire on the launch pad mission control had not faced anything like this before. And no Americans had ever been lost in space. After hearing a loud bang and seeing an oxygen tank empty, the Apollo 13 astronauts reported to Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center, OK, Houston, we've had a problem. The ensuing real-life drama proved that to be an understatement. The crew moved into the craft's tiny lunar module, designed to keep two men alive for just two days. With the astronauts four days from home, NASA engineers had their work cut out for them. Among other measures, the temperature in the module was lowered to 38 degrees Fahrenheit to conserve oxygen and electricity. The world was waiting and watching as the module splashed down in the South Pacific. Just barely ahead of the failure of the oxygen. All three astronauts survived the disaster, which came to be known as the successful failure. Apollo 13 never reached its destination but, despite the odds, made it back to Earth safely. What was the first scientific textbook on human anatomy? It is a work titled On the Structure of the Human Body, written by Belgian physician and professor Andreas V. E. S. Aleus. 1514-1564, and published in 1543, when he was in his late twenties. Like other anatomists during the Renaissance, 1350-1600, V.E.S. Aleus conducted numerous dissections of human cadavers. Publishing his findings and drawings, his textbook soon became the authoritative reference. Overturning the works of Greek physician Galen, 129 c. 199. What is Gray's Anatomy? It is the popular name for anatomy of the human body, descriptive and surgical. Written by English physician Henry Gray, 1825 or 1827-1861. First published in 1858, the tome is still considered the standard work on anatomy. And it is in print today in several editions, including the concise Gray's Anatomy. Gray was a lecturer in anatomy at London's St. George's Hospital and was a fellow of Britain's Royal College of Surgeons. He was 33 years old when he compiled the book, which went on to be used by medical students for more than a century.
What was populism? A commoners movement, in the United States populism was formalized in 1891 with the founding of the Populist Party. Which worked to improve conditions for farmers and laborers. In the presidential election of 1892, the party supported its own political candidate. The former, third party, Greenback candidate James B. Weaver. 1833-1912. Though Weaver lost, the populists remained a strong force. In the next presidential election, of 1896, they backed Democratic Party candidate William Jennings Bryan. 1860-1925, a self-proclaimed commoner who was sympathetic to the causes of the Farmers' Alliances and of the National Grange. Reform-minded agricultural organizations, as well as the nation's workers. Bryan lost to William McKinley, 1843-1901, and soon after the election the Populist Party began to fall apart. Disappearing altogether by 1908. Nevertheless, the party's initiatives continued to figure in the nation's political life for the next two decades and many populist ideas were made into laws including the free coinage of silver and government issue of more paper money, greenbacks, to loosen the money supply. Adoption of a graduated income tax, passage of an amendment allowing for the popular election of U.S. Senators. The Constitution provided for their election by the state legislatures, passage of antitrust laws to combat the monopolistic control of American business, and implementation of the eight-hour workday. Since the early 1900s political candidates and ideas have continued to be described as populist. Meaning they favor the rights of and uphold the beliefs and values of the common people. What advances were made in medicine during the Middle Ages? During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, medicine became institutionalized. The first public hospitals were opened and the first formal medical schools were established, making healthcare formerly administered only in the home, more widely available and improving the training of doctors. These developments had been brought on by necessity. Europe saw successive waves of epidemics during the Middle Ages. Outbreaks of leprosy began in the 500s and peaked in the 1200s, the Black Death. The Bubonic Plague killed about a quarter of the European population. And smallpox and other diseases afflicted hundreds of thousands of people. Consequently, many hospitals meant to serve the poor were established. As were the first medical schools, some of them associated with universities that were then forming such as the University of Bologna, Italy, and the University of Paris, France. In 900 the first medical school was started in Salerno, Italy. European physicians during the period were greatly influenced by the works of Persian physician and philosopher Rezes. Or Reza, C865 C930 considered the greatest doctor of the Islamic world. 
Rezes's works accurately describing measles and smallpox were translated into Latin and became seminal references in the Christian world as well. Another prominent Islamic, the scientist Avicenna, or Ibn Sina, 980-1037, produced a philosophical scientific encyclopedia, which included the medical knowledge of the time. In the West, the work became known as Canon of Medicine and with its descriptions of many diseases, including tetanus and meningitis, it remained influential in European medical education for the next 600 years. Was the Titanic the most disastrous shipwreck of all time? Though it is certainly the most famous, it is not the most disastrous. According to shipping registries, three wrecks were worse than the Titanic. In April 1865 the sidewheel steamboat Sultana exploded on the Mississippi River, killing 1,653 of the estimated 2,300 people on board. The packet steamboat had routinely carried passengers and cargo between St. Louis and New Orleans. In 1917 the Mont Blanc exploded in the harbor at Halifax. Nova Scotia, claiming 1,635 lives and severely injuring more than 1,000. The ship, which was a French munitions carrier, World War I was raging at the time, was struck by a Norwegian relief ship, the Imo. The Mont Blanc was laden with thousands of tons of TNT, acid, and other explosives, which were ignited in the collision. The explosion was so terrific that it laid waste to much of Halifax and generated a tsunami that swept through the city. Most recently, in 1987, the Dona Paz collided with another ship off the Philippines, 1,840 died. 